Our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that your word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We pray now that you'd help me to preach your word faithfully. And we pray that your spirit would make that word alive in our hearts, transforming us from within, that we may truly live as those who are ready for the return of our Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, are you ready for the return of Jesus? Are you ready for the return of Jesus? Uh, it's very easy to go through life with little or no thought to the return of Jesus. Uh, it's very easy to make plans for our studies and our work and our families as if life in this world will continue on forever, that Jesus won't return that this world will never end. Uh, in so doing, we can easily live like non-believers, uh, adopting the same priorities and, and values and schedules and plans uh, that only take account of the things of this life. Uh, and yet we confess in our creeds each week that Jesus will come again as the judge of the living and the dead. And in this season of Advent in particular, we remember the return of Jesus. And so it's very helpful to ask ourselves, am I ready for Jesus' return? If Jesus was to return today, would I be confident to face Jesus as my judge? Would he find me serving him as I ought to be? Or have I fallen asleep on the job? Well, that is the topic of our passage this morning from Mark 13. And my aim is that God's word would wake us up this morning so that we would be um, awake and ready, actively serving Jesus as we wait for his return. Uh, Mark 13 is a part of Jesus' apocalyptic discourse, as it's called, which he spoke to his disciples just a few days before his death. And the first half of the chapter is especially concerned with God's impending judgment on Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. Now, Jesus says back in verse 2, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Jerusalem, the temple, will be devastated. But in verses 24 to 37, Jesus looks forward to an even greater judgment to come, the final judgment day when he will return and each of us will give an account to him of our lives. And the first point this morning, Jesus tells us that he will return as king in unmistakable power and glory. Jesus will return as king in unmistakable power and glory. Look at verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the destruction of the temple, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. In the Old Testament prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Joel and Amos and, and, and Zephaniah, uh, that kind of description is frequently used to describe the great day of God's judgment. Uh, for example, here in Isaiah chapter 13, verses 9 to 11. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. See, as the sun, the moon, the stars, as they turn to darkness, it's a sign of the judgment of God. And so the ninth plague in Egypt was darkness. And as Jesus dies on the cross, the sun is darkened. And so it will be at the end. This, this cosmic darkness pictures the great day of final judgment when God will come to punish all evil in this world. So Jesus shows his return will be unmistakable. 
Uh, we must not be led astray by pretenders falsely claiming that Jesus has already returned. If he had returned, we would know about it. Jesus tells us what will happen when he returns. Look at verse 26. We will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Now that term, Son of Man, was Jesus' favourite way of talking about himself. and it, it means more than just that he was a human being. Back in Daniel chapter 7 in the Old Testament, we meet one like a son of man who comes to God's throne on the judgment day to receive God's kingdom. Look at Daniel 7 verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. Now we're told in verse 14, his rule is absolute. To him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. We're told his rule is universal. All peoples, nations and languages should serve him. And we're told his rule is eternal. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. And so the Son of Man was God's absolute, universal, eternal king. And he would come on the clouds of heaven to receive that kingdom from his Father. Jesus is saying that he will return as that absolute universal king in all power and glory. You see, his return will be absolutely unmistakable. And when he returns, we're told he will gather in his people from the ends of the earth into his heavenly kingdom. Verse 27 says, Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Now at this point I should mention another common uh, understanding of these verses. And that is that verses 24 to 27 do not describe the future, but they describe the past. For some rightly note that when Jesus died on the cross, the judgment day began. As Jesus bore the wrath of God on our sin, the sun did turn to darkness. And when Jesus was raised again and ascended to heaven, he went on the clouds to be enthroned as king. And right now Jesus is sending out his messengers into all the world to gather people into his kingdom. And so there are some that say verses 24 to 27 describe the past. But I think it's better to see those events of the past, of the death and the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus, as a foretaste of what Jesus is now speaking will happen at the end. For when Jesus returns... And the final judgment day arrives, the sun will be turned to darkness once more. And Jesus will come on the clouds full of power and glory. And he will send out his angels once more to gather his redeemed into his new creation. These verses are telling us the world will not go on forever. Jesus will return in unmistakable power and glory. The judgment day will arrive. The question is, are we ready for his return? Well, our answer to that question is urgent because point two now, Jesus' return is certain and imminent. Jesus' return is certain and imminent. Look at verse 28. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So Jesus is telling his disciples and us that his return is certain and imminent. Now to rightly understand these verses, we must answer the question, what are the these things that Jesus is talking about here? What are these things that are going to happen in the lifetime of the apostles 
as a sign that his return is imminent. Now, I think the key is the mention of that fig tree there in verse 26. From, sorry, verse 28. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. Now, you might remember in Mark chapter 12, as Jesus rides into Jerusalem, he sees a fig tree and he curses it because it has no fruit. And to understand the point of that strange incident, we need to, to, to realize that in the Old Testament, Israel is frequently described as a fig tree. See, Israel should have borne fruit. They should have welcomed Jesus as king as he rolled in. But instead, Jesus came to the temple only to find wickedness and evil. He cleared out the temple. He came only to find opposition to his rule. And so in Mark 13, verses 5 to 23, Jesus pronounces his judgment. The Jews would be judged. Jerusalem and the temple would be destroyed. Those are the, these things that he is talking about. He's saying when you see these things take place, when you see the temple destroyed, when you see not one stone left on another, when you see Israel judged and destroyed by their enemies, then know that the end of the world is near. Jesus' return is imminent. And just as Jesus predicted, those very things happened in the lifetime of the apostles. And not only did the sun turn to darkness when Jesus died, not only did Jesus ascend to heaven on the clouds as the glorified king, not only did he begin that global mission, but in AD 70, God's judgment fell on the Jews as the Romans came and the temple was destroyed never to be rebuilt again, and Jerusalem was devastated. Jesus says, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. Those destructive events back in AD 70 show us that the return of Jesus and the judgment day are real and they are near. Because there is only one last checkbox on God's to-do list before Jesus returns. What is it? Well, Jesus mentioned back in verse 10, the gospel must first be proclaimed to all the nations. The gospel must be proclaimed to all the nations. Only then will the end come. The only thing stopping the return of Jesus is the completion of God's global mission. And, of course, we don't know how much longer that will be. Uh, so far, there's been 2,000 years of world mission, and it's still not completed. But one day it will be completed, and Jesus will return. And Revelation tells us there will be people from every tribe and nation and language and people that are gathered around Jesus' throne. And the judgment day will then come. Jesus' return is certain and imminent. And that means point three now. We must always be awake and ready for Jesus' return. We must always be awake and ready for Jesus' return. Now, when Jesus, when, when I say that uh, Jesus' return is certain and imminent, please do not misunderstand that anyone knows when exactly that will be. Uh, Jesus clarifies that for us in verse 32. He says, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The exact day and hour of Jesus' return is a mystery even to Jesus. And so if someone comes to you and says, look, Jesus is coming back on this date, you know, because of this disaster or, or that uh, pandemic or that reading of the book of Revelation, then please, do not listen to them. Don't be deceived. If Jesus doesn't know when he's returning, then how could a false prophet possibly know? It may be tomorrow. It may be another thousand years. We do not know how long it will take for God's global mission to be completed and for Jesus to return. But we do know that Jesus will return one day. And so we must always be ready for it. Now verse 33 says, be on guard. 
Keep awake, for we do not know when the time will come. It's very dangerous to live as though Jesus is never coming back. Because one day he will come back. And the last thing we want is for him to return when we are not ready to face him. And Jesus tells a parable in verse 34. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. In this parable, Jesus is the master who has gone away to heaven. And the servants are his people entrusted with the work of proclaiming the gospel to the nations. And the point of the parable is this. We do not know when Jesus is going to come back. And so we must always be awake and ready to welcome him as we continue to do the work that he commanded us to do. And so we must reflect this morning. Are you awake? Are you alert? Are you ready for the return of Jesus? And does your life reflect it? Well, it may be this morning that you're tuning in as someone who is investigating the Christian faith. And and, and you know that right now, actually, you are not ready for the return of Jesus because you have not Turn to him yet as your saviour and king. Your sins are not yet forgiven by him. You're you're still putting off his rule from your life. And of course it's important to to take time to investigate and it's important to make sure our questions are answered before we make a really important decision in life. But can I urge you not to take too long to make that decision to trust Jesus as your saviour and king. Because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. And it would be an absolute tragedy if you left it too late to trust him. If he returned tomorrow and found you still in rebellion against him and then you face his judgment because you left it to the last minute. Turn to him now. Trust in Jesus' death on the cross. Serve him as the king of your life. Make sure you are ready for King Jesus to return. But of course, this parable is about more than just becoming a Christian. This parable is really warning those who are already Christians not to fall asleep on the job. Now, it would be terrible, isn't it, if you, you, you took a quick nap while the boss was out at a meeting, only for him to return prematurely and find you asleep at the desk, how do you think he would respond? We must be on guard. We must be alert. We must get on with the work that he has given us to do while we're waiting for him to return. We don't want him to find us asleep on the job with the work of gospel mission long forgotten. And so as we celebrate Advent and we remember this morning that Jesus is returning, let us reflect together as a church. Have we lost our heartbeat for evangelism? Have we become so engrossed with the internal affairs of the church that we've forgotten the mission of the church? Or have we become so engrossed with the world, with our careers and our houses and our families and our holidays and our hobbies? That we've forgotten that the only reason Jesus hasn't come back yet is that the world needs to hear the gospel. Are we in danger of being sleepy Christians or being a sleepy church? Perhaps we need to wake up, to be alert, to be ready, to reset our perspective. Jesus is coming back. To to refocus our attention, we have a mission. The gospel is to be proclaimed to the nations. For we've seen today, Jesus will return as king in unmistakable power and glory. 
and Jesus' return is certain and imminent. We do not know when it will be. And we must always be awake and ready for his return, getting on with the work of mission that he has entrusted to us. Are you ready for the return of King Jesus? Wake up, because he is coming soon. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is returning as our King to bring us home to a whole new creation. We thank you that he died on the cross so that we do not need to fear that day. We pray that you would help us to live now as his faithful servants who are ready for his return as we engage in the work of mission that you have given to us to complete. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.